Hi. Today I'm going to read Grace Interrupted by Julie Heisey. The two women glared at me with such sizzling fury I was afraid their eyeballs might catch fire. Flanked as they were by a pair of our manor's elderly security guards, they appeared harmless enough, but both were so visibly agitated it was hard to be sure. They shifted their weight and met my gaze as the guards, Niles and William, explained the situation and handed me the women's photo IDs. I took an involuntary step back in case either of the two in custody decided to take a swing at me. We faced each other in Marshfield Manor's West Salon, a high-ceilinged room on the mansion's first floor. In the midst of a major refurbishment, the room was off-limits to visitors. Painting scaffolds blocked butternut bookcases, café au lait walls, and even one of the floor-to-ceiling windows. The two massive billiard tables that hadn't been removed were covered with protective canvas duck. Since it was Friday and near quitting time, the painters and carpenters had taken off for the weekend, leaving the West Salon empty and quiet. I was pleased that our two security guards had opted to escort our unwelcome visitors here. This way, our conversation would not disturb lingering tourists taking a final circuit of the mansion. Casting a wary glance at the women, Niles did most of the talking. We tried to tell them, politely understand, that the South Grounds were off limits, but they drove straight down there anyway. When we caught up with them on foot, they started beating us up. That's a lie, the shorter one, Rainy said, slim yet curvy. She watched for my reaction with the alertness of a cat ready to pounce. At first, I guessed her to be Hispanic or Italian, but based on the surname from her ID, Ojitani, I thought perhaps there might be some Japanese in her blood. She wore her dark hair pulled back into a severe ponytail, sleek like a panther. She ran an abrasing gaze over the two men, as though sizing up dinner options. William fingered his jacket, where the sleeve had been torn from the shoulder. They ruined my uniform. Niles pointed in the general direction of Marshfield Manor's far southern grounds, where a group of Civil War reenactors were establishing a campsite. The guy that they're after is the one I feel sorry for. I wondered how our two security guards had managed to corral these women and herd them back here. Rainey was clearly a tough cookie. I, too, felt sorry for the guy they were after. Who exactly is this Zachary Kincaid, I asked. Rainey took a step forward. Zachary Kincaid is a world-class jerk. I can only hope one of his Civil War buddies plants a musket ball into his brain. With a malicious grin, she turned to her companion, or better yet, aim lower. That would be fitting, don't you think? The other woman, Tamara, didn't answer. Although she also wore her hair pulled back, hers was washed-out blonde streaked with gray. Sporting heavy eye makeup, crimson nails, and three silver chains hanging from her thick neck, she kept her hands shoved into her pockets, edging away as she eyed the door. Neither woman looked like the type to trespass on private property simply to pick a fight. They were both in their mid-thirties and, if their clothes were any indication, financially well off. They wore almost identical outfits of easy, comfortable pants and tops in solid black. Most pieces bore recognizable logos. Everything, including their black leather ballet flats, appeared brand new, like they'd prepared ahead for a stealth maneuver. Attempting to parse what I knew with what stood before me, I was reminded of a puzzle game from the Sunday papers. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If you want to learn more about Julie or about Grace Interrupted, remember to go to the descriptions below. You'll find Julie's website. You can go there and learn anything you need. Okay? Thanks again for stopping by. See you soon. <music>